Good afternoon, everyone. This is Elaine Groman on Earth Wisdom Circles. You know, today I am doing a solo show as I did last week because I am finding that there's so much information that people are coming to me and asking me about. And really, it's about personal growth, growing together. And so what I want to share with you is, you know, we are in a time of obviously coming through this incredible shakeup worldwide that has been post-pandemic and post-pandemic. There is a lot of insecurity. There's a lot of unrest. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of confusing information. And many people are kind of digging in their heels because many people are afraid to change. Many people are afraid to relinquish what they believe. And so that is why I wanted to talk today about how do we begin to learn how to grow together. And this morning, what I like to do, if the weather is nice, and even if the weather isn't so great, I get up early in the morning, I get my cup of coffee. And if it's nice outside, I go outside. And I just take a look around in nature. In the many decades that my husband and I have lived on our property, we have built up gardens and they're now very mature. So I am always in awe of what is growing, what is growing together, what is making this rich panorama of beauty in a garden. And then I look around to the natural landscape that has not been manicured or cultivated on its, uh, you know, by a human. And I look into the richness of the wooded area around where I live. And that I realize is also this beautiful gathering of growing together, of different species growing together. As I sat on my front front deck this morning enjoying my coffee, I was watching how various birds and different species of birds would come to the feeder at different times as if they were respecting one another's space and opportunity to get food. And then they would fly off to the branches and give the next group their time. So there was there was some beautiful little chickadees, probably about 10 chickadees. And then there was little sparrows. And it was interesting to watch that they were collaborative. They worked together. Occasionally there was a blue jay or something like that that came in and kind of disrupted the whole thing. And for me, it was a metaphor of those groups of individuals, those groups of uh, species that work together collaboratively, move away from a space so that the next group can have what they need. And it got me to thinking about wanting to do a show today about how do we learn how to grow together, growing together um, in insight, in intelligence, in examining our own personal points of view, whether they're workable, whether they're not workable. And also last evening as I was finishing a project that I was working on and watching uh, television, I was watching something about um, how there's so much disclosure of things that in the past were completely um, dismissed or said to be illusory. And part of the challenge that we have in our world today is, I think, personally, first of all, I think we all have to start within. We have to look at our own points of view to examine, are we flexible? Are we willing to grow? Are we set in our own ways? Or are we willing to <clears throat> expand what we believe or what we think and or, and dismiss ideas that are no longer working and in order to expand and enhance things that we, we already know. <clears throat> 
So last evening there was, I was watching a show, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I was watching a show about the disclosure of UFOs, which to me is such a fascinating um, topic and a big one because it is kind of a, a metaphor of how we ourselves view our own world in the space around us. And so we cannot uh, deny that there's many, many forms of life in our own uh, immediate environment that we may know about or may, we may absolutely be completely unaware of. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So I was looking at this, how both the cosmos is growing together, growing and we are learning so much more about it. And that's very important that we do have that exploration so that we understand so much more about our origins and our own personal journey as a human species. But also, I believe that it's really important that we look at our own perspective and our own quote unquote orbit of what we have swirling around in our heads, the way we um, model our lives, the way we view ourselves, and begin to understand whether that is limited or whether that is expansive. There was a thing, I believe it was either the History Channel or the Discovery Channel, where they were talking with various uh, astronauts, former astronauts, individuals who had the extraordinary opportunity to literally go out into space, some of them for extended periods of time, for instance, on the Mir uh, space station, and in collaboration with other countries to work together to see how we can bring great minds and great opportunities for experimentation and um, discovery together rather than exclusively being wanting to be the first and uh, to claim knowledge. And so what I found very refreshing is that individuals who have seen things in the sky, in around the earth, orbiting the earth, close to spacecrafts, close to even in our atmosphere, close to aircraft, there's so much where we don't know. There is so much that we are not aware of. And so in this pandemic, post-pandemic, if we can even call it post-pandemic time, we are certainly in a time of an evolutionary change within the way we begin to see ourselves. Obviously, whether we're aware of it or not, we are always evolving. We are always in the process of growing our civilization or destroying our civilization, depending upon how balanced we are in our thinking and our actions. And unfortunately and certainly we know every day that our lives could end at any moment. And we can either die of an illness, we can die of a trauma, we can die of something sudden. And what we need to do is to be very conscious, I believe, in the time that we have every day. Waking up in the morning and seeing the sunrise, seeing this beautiful star that is, we call our sun, that is offering us illumination offering us light, offering us the opportunity for us to visually see because of the light that it emits. What is around us to explore? And that is why the great um, image of a light bulb going off over someone's head when they have an idea is because it is something that we see. We have an idea. We, we even say, oh, I see when we have an illumination. So I think that, you know, we, we can either continue to do things as we have done, or we can give ourselves the opportunity to grow and to change as we become more collaborative, even within our own mind, certainly within our personal relationships and in our extended relationships. 
we also have had the arrogance of mind to think that just because someone is an older individual means that they are necessarily of a healthy mind or that if we can also at the same time have an incorrect notion that just because someone is aged that they don't have the wisdom that a young person has so we we have to examine i believe what we think and as we do then we get to have the opportunity to pause and ask ourselves is it true what i believe is it is it beneficial to me? Is it beneficial? Is it workable? And if it isn't, I think that we would be wise to begin to ask our quest ourselves the question, how do we go about making uh, a difference? How do we go about making a change that will ease the space we have within our, our minds and in our own space? so that we can be joyfully um, creative. I, I appreciate the opportunity that I have when I'm working outside. This past weekend, I did a lot of work outside. Um, where I li live in Michigan, we had a tremendous amount of rain, so everything is beautifully flourishing. And uh, fortunately, where we are, there's not flooding in our particular locale, but I do recognize that some have suffered great challenges because of the infrastructure is not working. So in some areas, the rains have been a blessing, and in other areas, the rains have been a challenge. So we have to look at what needs to be changed, what needs to be corrected, what needs to be updated. But as I was working in the garden, I was becoming extremely aware of the fact that as we're in the middle of July right now, in not too distant time frame from now, it's going to start to get cold again. And another season will have passed and another year will have passed and another age will have been added to my life another year. And it really humbles me to think about what am I doing that is helping not only myself, but others live more joyfully. So I wanted to let you know that I have personally been working on with, with the wonderful collaboration of two women from a group called the Collective Consulting Group um, that are helping me to rework my website so that all of the things that I have done over the years can be much more inclusive in what I'm offering. So uh, it will be this week that we will relaunch the website and I'm really happy to let you know about that. And my website, by the way, is www.elainegroman.com. That is E-L-A-I-N-E-G-R-O-H-M-A-N.com. And what I'm offering is many different things. As an artist, so many of you might not realize that my background actually is an artist. And as an artist, I enjoy um, particularly what one of my specialties is calligraphy. And my joy has always been to try to make something visually beautiful so that the words that I write hit home, that they make an impact, that they are received for um, the message that they are providing. And I always include my calligraphy with my photography and my writing, just to give people a little something to think about every day that gives them a moment of pause to appreciate what life is doing on our behalf for us. So I, as a writer, I have been a contributing writer to a couple of magazines over the years. I have accumulated a lot of these articles that you're welcome to read in the blog section. 
and I am translating them into Italian because I have a lot of friends that are Italian and that live in Sardinia in Italy. And, and if other people are interested in any other language uh, uh, translation, please feel free to contact me at Elaine at ElaineGroman.com. And I would be happy to see if I can have those translations um, uh, put on my blog. My hope is to expand the reach of what I do. Also, I have created um, webinars that are on demand. So they have already been recorded. So at your leisure, you have the opportunity to um, go to my website. And for a nominal fee, you can take a look at that. And that helps to promote what I'm doing and helps to make it a little bit more sustainable for myself so that I can continue to do the work that I'm doing and grow. So I just wanted to give you some opportunities to think about that. And this week, hopefully later on today, actually, it will um, be launched. And again, that is ElaineGroman.com. So on that, it will have the posting of the shows that I have been on, um, both on television and of course, my own radio show on Empower Radio, which I've been very blessed to work with Brent Carey and Anthony Kojo and and Remy Smith and various other individuals who have been my producers over the years. So um, I think that the unique thing about, I know the unique thing about Earth Wisdom Circles and in particular Empower Radio is that, that Brent Carey had the foresight to really envision what, um, what information could be provided in the platform of first it was internet radio and then podcasts. So that instead of just dire circumstances or dire information or rhetoric that is very um, challenging to listen to over and over again, he had the insight to create something that would literally would empower people. And so thus the beginning of Empower Radio. So I'm really honored to be a part of that this platform. And I am really grateful that this um, broadcast, this podcast can be listened to anytime around the world. And it, I'm deeply touched by that opportunity. So as we see in the last couple of years, in fact, this last year, how we have been able to transform how business is done and business is conducted because of the pandemic and it has helped us to grow together in ways that we thought was impossible. Um, we Now it is very commonplace for people to work remotely or to work at home, but to be just as collaborative, if perhaps not even more collaborative than they have been in the past in, in the immediacy of conversation and um, an openness that perhaps was not so easy in the past. And so, I, I am really looking forward to using the remainder of my life to help people understand how we can really be in a sense of appreciation of what it means to be a human being, what it means to have this experience that we call life in this amazing machine we call a body with these amazing uh, communicators called our emotions and the amazing, insightful, illuminative projections that we have within our mind that can help us to take tangible action, can help us to look at what is already present before us and see how we can grow together in a different way than we have. So as I did last week, I invited my sweet producer, Anthony Kojo. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> um, to like join me. And I do mean that. Sweet. You are sweet. I've been called many things. Sweet <laughs> is one of them. <laughs> Good. Um, so as he was off doing a little bit of business, but what, what I was talking about is the growing together and how um, we are really in this opportunity now to look at um, how we can change 
who we are. Just the other day, I had um, met with a couple individuals that had really unique opportunities in their business. And in fact, one of them I was hoping to have on today, but she was unable to, to clear her schedule, but I will have her in at another time, which is an individual who helps businesses understand how to change their environment, how to work with their uh, clientele or with their um, employees so that not only are they doing their best, but they're, they're being given the opportunity to grow in different ways. And another individual who is working with people who are in the upper echelon of businesses in what they call the C-suite, which I had to ask them what that meant. And the C-suite was the chief suite, you know, chief oh. executive officer, chief right. operational officer, et cetera. Big wig. Yeah, the big wigs. But how do they, how are they being given an opportunity to change the way they view themselves in based on their predecessors, maybe that were in the industrial age that were either cutthroat or win at any cost, but how are they looking at their own personhood and their own, uh, what does it mean to be a leader in sure. the business world? So, um, Kojo, please at any time, if you have any thoughts that you'd like to, you know, share about your experience as being in the broadcast industry, how you have seen, you know, just how people have been able to change from being in the radio world into podcasts and how that has changed um, and has expanded the growth of information around the world. Well, you want well, with COVID? Yeah, post COVID and just the natural um, growth of this industry. Well, I'll tell you how I've been very disappointed with how radio has handled uh, COVID. Yes, yeah. yes, please. Let's talk about that. Do we have anything positive to say about that? Podcasting has been great. I mean, uh, everywhere I talk to people who have been in radio, oh, I think we're going to get in podcasting. Well, yeah, what's your show going to be about? Well, I have a couple of great ideas. Talk to him two months down the line. Did you start your show? No, not really. Okay, well, that's great. Uh, there seems to be motivation, but um, I've only found a couple of my friends or people I know have actually started something, but I seem to be more pessimistic about that whole idea. But with radio, let me tell you, it seems like if you weren't in a position of having a, a real solid on-air um, position, then you were SOL. Do you know what that means? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because promotion events, promotional events stopped. They were done. Yes. Um, hiring freeze done. Every company I, I know of, it was done. Uh, COVID, when it started, I was producing a nationally syndicated financial talk show. Uh, I was safe. I, I was not harmed, which was fine. Uh, I was let go for other reasons down the line. Not important. Um, but I'll tell you what. And that was that was my phone. I apologize for that. Um, it was it was it was rough to see anyone who had any interest in getting in in the door of radio. Their dreams were squashed like a bug, and I assume that was the same for TV, but. Maybe not because there was there was field work to do, but even so, the most of the reporters they were report, they were reporting from home with their masks on, uh, and it started to pick up a couple months into the whole COVID thing. But radio, it was done. They they all they were all given microphones and and uh, stereo equi equipment to broadcast from their basements or their offices from home. That was it. They would they would fire people left and right because the big wigs in radio realized they were allowed to do this. It's, they were like, okay, this is it. We can do this now. Let's do it. <laughs> I was disappointed. When you say let's do this, you mean get rid of people? What do you mean let's do this? I mean, it was always kind of a well-known thing that a lot of the bigger, higher-up people in radio were not the best people. <laughs> and I... I mean that in the nicest respect possible. And and I also kind of don't 
So maybe. Well, you know, I think that, and and correct me if you if you think I'm wrong, but I think that, you know, in preceding COVID, and even still during COVID, there was there is such a sensationalism mm -hmm. that has always been associated with the media, yeah. that we sh that we um, we glorify horrible things that happen. Yeah. And we have neglected to look at the wonderful things that people are doing. Okay. So people have an uh, incorrect, disproportionate belief that we're in a terrible world because there, there's so much emphasis on, on the violence, on, on you know, corruption and whatever. But really not looking at, and I think that we've they've kind there's there's a boat that has been missed, and I think that, um, and I really commend Brent because I think that he has really stepped forward to say how do we empower? Yep. And I think that we either have to become a part of the, or we recognize we're part of the problem, or we become a part of the solution. And so that's why I'm so grateful to be a part of Empower Radio because, and one of the things I strive to do is to help people to look at things differently, more with a, a, a benevolence, uh, a true appreciation, and then an enthusiasm about what we can do to mitigate the problems that we ourselves have created. Yeah. And I think that... Um, you know, we, we had to have this pause um, of time in order for us to either squarely look at what we do or don't do and either continue on the same journey of personal destruction. I mean, when I, when I see individuals who are very angry individuals, frustrated individuals, they neglect to understand that they create their own problems by the way they think. Yes, they do. And so I think that that's why I wanted to entitle this show today, Growing Together. How do we learn to be collaborative? How do we learn to make sure that everyone has what they need? If we could somehow or other have some brilliant convergence of intelligence and not just academia, but workability so that we can look and if everyone at minimum has what they need to survive and, and then help them to gain what they need to thrive, everyone. Then I think that we would see such a different world um, I was talking before you came on about watching some of um, History Channel and Discovery Channel where they were looking at in the past week or so, um, you know, people from the industrial ages and, and, and people that quote unquote built America is what this um, title of this show was, I think, on this oh. History Channel. Yeah. And they were ruthless people. And I guess they built an industry but at the expense of personal relationships, at the expense of um, so much, but most importantly of their own integrity. Now, that's not to say that everybody was ruthless, but many of them were. And so mm -hmm. I think that we have to look at in, in our various schools, business schools, medical schools, how do we bring collaboration more to the forefront? Dreamer. <laughs> oh, Elaine, you're, you, you know, you, you just are too optimistic. <laughs> I don't ever want to stop being that. No, never. Because, because it's, it is the dreamers that, that are creative. It is the dreamers who make a difference. Right. And so right. I, I'm really intrigued by how things are going to unfold. And as so many things are being disclosed, another thing that I was speaking about while you were, you were doing something else was that um, talking about how so much secret information that has been kept from humanity is now being disclosed. For instance, um, that we're not the only ones in this cosmos, you yeah. know? 
And I started out by saying, you know, I'm sitting in my garden in the morning and I know that I'm not the only species there. There's birds, there's trees, there's plants, there's animals. And we're so accustomed to seeing them, but we don't realize where do they actually come from? Yeah. Where, where, what are these beings? What are these birds saying to one another? What are they saying about me? You know, <laughs> oh, there's that, there's that woman again. Or, you know, yeah. what if they said, oh, there is that trouble. There's trouble again. Or what if there's the person that's beating us, you know? Right. We, we just have to learn to change our perspective, I think. And how have you seen, Kojo, um, things changing in regard to doing podcasts? I know you mentioned earlier that some people wanted to do podcasts, but I think that, first of all, I think people think that you get rich doing this. You don't. Right. Uh, well, that that um, it's easy to do to sit and talk. It's not. I'm hearing commercials on the radio about podcasts, and I find that fascinating because I'm hearing a lot of different ones. Um, murder podcasts, uh, history podcasts. And I didn't expect that. Um, and it's always go find the murder podcast wherever you hear your podcasts. And that's interesting because they're all connected now. It's, it's kind of like a cable. Company. Well, it's almost like a library. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's exactly a library. Mm -hmm. It's a library. You can go to the, where you used to go to a physical library where many people might not anymore. Yep. You go to the murder mystery section, you go to the sci-fi, you go to history, you go to science. And if you, you have know? an iPhone, you, you automatically have an app on it that says podcasts. It's the podcast app. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew that. And you could type in, by the way, Elaine Groman or Earth Wisdom Circles, and you're already there. I did not know that. See? Did, did you really not pick up your phone right now? Do, do you have your phone in front of you? I do. There you go. Open. And this is for your listeners, by the way. If you have an iPhone in front of you, it's very easy to subscribe. Type in Earth Wisdom, and I'm sure it'll pop up before you even finish typing circles. So wait a minute. I have to find the app that says podcast? Yeah. So you can, from your home screen, you can swipe down or up, depending on which uh, iPhone you have. Uh -huh. There should be a search bar at the top of your screen. Yeah. And type in uh, podcast, and it's a purple. Oh, app. yeah, yeah. I see it. Yep. And then you can search somewhere on the app. Oh, I'll be darned. You are absolutely right. So I'm going to Earth Wisdom Circles. Should be there. Earth Wisdom. It's Probably. starting to come. Is it there? No, it is not there. <laughs> Get out of here. No, I'm serious. It comes up emotional health. Angels, just about everything else. We typed to all of Earth Wisdom Circles. I did. Okay. Next week on Earth Wisdom Circles, we will have it figured out. Maybe <laughs> exactly what I was uh, working on with Brent before the show. Um, ah, okay. Wait, can you type in? Uh, never mind. We'll, we'll we'll figure it we'll out. We'll do that another time. It's all yeah. the listeners are not talking about this. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, but but you know, I think that one of the challenges that that happens is um you know people think that to be on the radio or now on podcast that their goal is to become a personality right and that has always been something that i've resisted really it is not for me to be a personality, but for me to share information. So to for me, it's more about the information, not me as the personality. Okay. I'm the deliverer of the information and I and I recognize and respect the fact that I am privileged to do that and I get to um promote or share my thoughts about something. But I think that people have the mis misunderstanding that it is somehow going to make them a star. That's what I mean I by mean, personality. 
there yeah and we're still trying to break down the whole like podcast and radio dj thing because when when someone thinks about being a radio personality they think oh i'm on the radio you're listening to the 99.5 the riv and they're, they're like, no, I want to hold a podcast. I want to give information about something. On my podcast, we're going to learn about the Egyptian pharaohs or something like that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say? I don't know. Well, about that point. well I think that what I'm, tr- what I'm trying to talk about today is we really are being given an opportunity to, to really look at things in a different way. Yeah. You know, that now that we've had this time to see that, yes, indeed, people can work remotely and business can still be successful. Yes, we have to gradually get back to being in person because it's a very, you know, relationships are such a pivotal part of human experience, building relationships, being with people. We need that. Um, but we need to learn how to do it in a, in a kind and respectful and collaborative way. That to me is is so important. And then it shouldn't simply be who is the biggest and best, but who does the best in terms of who is who is capable and willing to make sure that we begin to mitigate some of the social challenges that we have in our world. Right. I, th- right. I think those are the kinds of leaders that are going to make a difference in our world, not just who can make the fastest car. Or who can make, uh, who can get so and so to the moon faster? Sure. It's it's what are we going to do? So I think that this time has given us the opportunity to see to see actually our faults as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that we have we have uh, seen many people unwilling to work because they have had financial assistance. And sure, it's wonderful to have that that safety net. Absolutely, we need those safety nets for people that are out of work. But what happens to the mind that says, well, gee, I don't have to work now, so I'm not going to do anything. You know, your time is still ticking by. Your life is still ticking by. Opportunities are still um, offered to you if you're willing to engage them. So I think that we have to recognize that every moment we're here to learn something. And that's a big, that can be an enormous gift for us. And the other evening I had the opportunity to have a few friends over just to sit around and have a little bonfire and have dinner together. And how wonderful it was to see um, how each of us, have taken this time to to redefine ourselves and to get into new situations and to come back together with family where we haven't in the past um, or had the time because of distance to see one another. And I think that if we're wise, we use this this time that we have had in this pandemic to reevaluate what we want to do to participate what we want to do to participate with life. And I think that that is given us an opportunity to acknowledge things that are not, not workable. If they're no longer working, then we can lovingly release ourselves from those things. And I think we have to learn how to do that. If, if we have talents that we want to share, how do we, how do we offer those talents so that others can uh, also be uh, inspired by their own creative abilities? And and just coming together, I think, is going to make a big difference. So in I think that it's kind of exciting that we're in this time with these podcasts. But I think that yes. I think that you you probably have seen more than I. Um, that there's a lot of junk out there. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So So we have to learn how to weed that out. I think we have to learn to be discerning in our own choices. 
and Most there's definitely. much junk reviews as well because everyone can review things. And uh, I mean, Apple Podcasts is a pretty safe net if you want to find your podcasts. Mm-hmm. There's so many services, and uh, it's like when TV first started, there were four channels. Well, one channel, you know. Right. And podcast starts. There's a million podcasts Mm -hmm. it's hard to find the right one you know right right and so i think you know that it's like weeding through just about anything um but one of the things that i think and again going back to i know that i've had some people say well you're just a dreamer and uh and that's fine by me to be a dreamer because uh, uh, the dreamers are the ones that look into possibilities, not just the dollars and cents of everything, but what what is a viable choice that we can make to um, make things more workable. So in the future shows, Um, I am looking forward to bringing together people that are really looking at ways of really helping people be them, their best selves, whether that's in business, whether that's in industry, whether that's in, uh, creative forces. I remember, gosh, it's probably been about easily 20 years ago. Now I was working in a uh, little ad agency or little design studio, actually. And I was learning about this thing called 3D printing. <laughs> and I could not get in my mind, what are they talking about? And I, th- I thought it was so unique, and but kind of far-fetched. But now we're seeing that 3D printers, there was a, a model um, of an asteroid that was created um, so that... It, astrophysicists at NASA could understand what something was made of by it from a photo that was taken by the Hubble telescope. And then, and then this image was actually printed in with a 3d printer so that they could understand the dynamics of this. Wow. And it was like, wow, how beautiful. Some of the things that maybe we're thinking about now that appear to be far fetched 20 years from now would be commonplace. So I think that we we owe ourselves the opportunity to be really bold in in thinking about how how can we just be disruptors in the best possible way? How do we disrupt violence? How do we disrupt um, civil unrest? How do we disrupt poverty? How do we disrupt um, any kinds of any kind of abuse of any kind? How do we hold people accountable? And, and right now people will say, well, that's a pie in the sky kind of idea. But yeah, in 20 years, it might be commonplace. And I think it would be really interesting to have a forum um, of these wild, beautiful ideas. Um, and, you know, what do they say? Whiteboard ideas or something like that, I think they call it. Something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Gee, maybe that's something we should do on Empower Radio to... You know, really empower people to voice their ideas. Um, the only the only big challenge that I have about podcasts is when I first started in radio and CBS, we could take calls on air. I know and, and I, I don't answer like questions directly, which I really thought was very very powerful. We can somehow take emails or tweets during the week, maybe. Ah. Oh. Maybe that would be an interesting thing to do. Yeah. Because what, what comes to mind, I, I'll never forget, I was um, very uh, honored to be uh, invited to participate in at CBS when CBS was just getting into internet radio and internet radio was just forming before podcasts. And, you know, instead of going to your radio dial, you could go to your, your computer and listen to something live. And I was asked to be a guest on someone else's show. And for those of you who don't know, I'm an intuitive, which means quote unquote psychic. 
I don't like that term because I think it's misrepresented and misunderstood. But um, I think I, it's too. I hear things and I feel things. In fact, I was on a show on a network at CBS called Psychic Radio, and I really kind of bristled against that. And I said, I really don't want to be thrown together in a bunch of people that may or may not do their job well. So I said I'd do a show for them, but I would want it to be called Going Beyond Medicine. And if there's opportunities to talk about our human potential to be intuitive, that would be an interesting thing. And so I think that we sensationalize, unfortunately, what are meant to be our natural instincts. So I, I really, maybe a show in the future will be to talk about what is intuitive information. What is What does it mean to be psychic? What does it mean to be a medium? Um, because in reality, I always say to people, anyone can learn how to do it. It's, it's using the senses that we have that religions try to make a bad thing and make it um, a mysterious uh, thing. But in truth, our senses are, including our intuition, our sixth sense, is, is a preservation device for the human species. Just as our ability to hear and see and feel and taste and know. And we have got to learn, I believe, what our actual gifts are. What is the gift of the human body? What is its capacity when we um, really stop and observe what our human body is capable of and how we have limited it? So these are some of the things that I think about and I have thought about during this time of the pandemic and being more sequestered and being more um, personal time. Although I, sometimes I feel I'm just as busy as I've always been. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me? I said, I know the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So how has it been for you, Kojo, in your own experience of being in this pandemic and learning what is workable and not workable in life, not necessarily just in broadcasting? Uh, can you repeat the question? Sorry, I was uh, looking at the time. Sure, okay. sure. You know, and I try to ask other people, so I'm not just putting you on the spot, but um, you know, what, what have you learned during this time, during this pandemic time where you're, you know, you get to reflect on what's meaningful to us. And I, I often ask that question of many people. I've learned that I've cap I'm capable of many, many things. Mm. And I, I'm, I'm growing immensely because I'm going through a lot of different personal issues right now mm -hmm. and also dealing with COVID. And I have two young children, so I'm I'm trying to learn a lot about myself. What I'm capable of is beyond my control at the moment. But uh, COVID is not going to defeat me. I'm going to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, I, honestly, uh, Elaine, your guidance has been great. So I need people in my life such as yourself. Oh, thank uh, you. Intuitives. Um, I, I like the word psychics, but I don't like what, uh, most people think about them. Do you do tarot? What are they called? Tarot card readings? What I do not do re card readings. Oh. Um, I always thought I, I just, I sit with people and I tell them what I'm hearing. And cool. so, and, and I often, in I'm, fact, I'm going to start doing, and I'll talk about this. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to start doing group readings again. I used to do that, um, uh, before COVID. And in a two hour period of time, you know, up to 20 people or more, I've had as many as 60 people in a group Whoa. that I share with every single one of them in the group, what I'm hearing about them. Oh and, God. and it's a two hour experience. And the, you know, there's deceased loved ones that come forward. And what that means is, you know, we are energy. And just because the physical body has died doesn't mean that the spirit of that person is no longer existing. 
but they have a different vantage point because they are not in the physical realm anymore. And they have a greater intellect, They, but they are uh, really trying to help us understand the preciousness of life. So people that are quote unquote mediums are the ones that quote unquote talk to the dead. <laughs> um, okay. But it's more than that. Uh, it's more about how my goal is to help people live their lives better. I, you know, we, we have sensory perceptions that we always don't always know how to interpret. So for instance, if, if you walk into a room and you just feel like, oh, something happened in this room that doesn't feel good, so you don't feel well yourself, or you can go into a place and it feels very joyful, it's because there's energetic signatures that are left by interactions, by uh, experiences that have happened there. And our bodies are designed to pick up this information because it's a preservation device. It is a way for us to say, this is a place I should avoid. This is a place that is safe. But we have, our emotions have been so um, uh, misunderstood. And our emotions are signals of energy in motion to help us understand where we should be and what the choices we should make. So as an intuitive, and the word psychic, by the way, just means of the mind, of the psychology. Oh, really? And pardon? I didn't know that. Yeah. So if you think of it as the, it is the precursor to the word psychology, psychologist. So it means of the mind. So a psychic is simply using their mind um, and using their senses to perceive information. But I don't use it as, I use it as a teaching tool always. And I'm often just absolutely delighted when I get exact names from people in spirit that are trying to uh, illustrate or to communicate with their loved one. And um, so that's happened before where you're in a room with someone and you get an exact name of someone. Oh, I've done it for years and years that's and years. Amazing. I just, I want to, I would love to be a part of that. Well, um, beginning July, excuse me, um, August 25th, I think it's a Wednesday. I'm, I'm going to put that on my website. I'm going to start doing group readings once a month or approximately once a month. Boom. Um, and for a nominal fee, you can come and, and um, the group dynamic is very powerful because mostly everyone is, so I'll give you an example. I was invited to a, a home um, and it was all women that were there and there was one little child. And I had never met any of these people before. They had learned of me from one of my books or where I talk about you know doing intuitive work. And as I was sitting across in this circle of women, I looked at this woman immediately across from me. And although I had never met her before, I could tell that she was being abused. Oh, my gosh. And I looked at her and I said, this man has no right to be abusive to you. And she looked like this blanched look on her face. And the woman next to her said, I told you. He has no right. That's cool. And so it brought out in front of all of these women that she knew that she was hiding this from. And it was a very cultural group. So it was an, it was very common, unfortunately, right. for the men to be abusive. It's incredible. And um, at the end, this a woman came up to me and actually I've written about it in one of my books. I think it was my second book, Spirit Awakening, that this, I didn't realize that this child was disabled. And um, she came up to me and she said, could you do a healing on my baby? And so I just laid the baby down on a, on a little soft rug and I moved some energy and I took the baby's hands and she sat right up and all the women started crying. And I said, why are you crying? And they said, the baby's never sat up before. Jeez, oh, Pete's. And she just took my hands. She let my hands go, and she sat there completely sitting on her own volition and was just 
the problem was there wasn't enough energy moving in her body. So I showed the mom how to do it. So, you know, most people don't realize I'm not just a radio host. I'm not just a podcast host. I mean, for nearly 25 years, I've been an energy healer and an intuitive. And it was when I had, when I was working in hospice, I was really starting to hear a lot from deceased individuals as they stood around the bedside of their dying loved one. Oh my gosh. And I would share that with them so that they would not be afraid. And they could see them clearly because all of their, all of their pretense was falling away as they were dying and they saw what was real. And so spirit is more real than the illusions we live in. And so I, Took, I was having so many experiences that I decided I had to study with an individual who was very gifted at this. And so I've done thousands and thousands of readings. So that's one of the things I do, Kojo. <laughs> won my mind, Elaine. That's a great, great place to end it. <laughs> well, again, I, I, I want to thank you. And I think that it's we really have an opportunity to learn li literally how to grow together because there's so many problems in our world that we ourselves have created. And it is up to us to come together to end this suffering that is so unnecessary on our planet. Suffering is emotional, pain is physical. So let's not create either one. And we can do that together. This is Elaine Groman on Earth Wisdom Circles. You can make a difference. You have it within you. Your body is capable. Your mind is open. Just let it be so.